our schools were a disaster before Katrina. Our health system was a disaster before Katrina. Katrina did was expose it. And what I want folks to understand is when we start looking at changing structural racism, it's not just looking at who was victimized by Katrina, but it is looking at policies that's impacting every city in this country. Because if there was a storm, tornado, rainfall, any damn way, you're going to see the same thing. I don't care if it's Houston, Atlanta, Chicago, you got a whole bunch of poor people. So what's race got to do with public policy? From conflicting views on affirmative action and tension surrounding high-stakes testing to three-strikes legislation, welfare reform, and predatory lending, public policies are directly responsible for negative outcomes in communities of color. In this dialogue, analysts and community activists focus on a number of key strategic questions. Move if you got the nerve. Most of the damage that's been done to communities of color, most of the disempowerment has been through policy action. Whether we're looking at housing development issues, job opportunities, access to health care and education, so many of our state and local policies are actually implicated in the production of these disparities. Public policy sets the framework for how a number of goods, service, opportunities are distributed in our society. Public policy is about the rules. It's about the rules organize how resources are allocated, who has power, who's in charge. So public policy is really a big chunk of the game. And right now the public policy framework is skewed so that it's actually punishing people of color. And I don't think we can address that without taking a very serious look at restructuring public policy. So when it comes to issues of racial justice and racial disparity, public policy ought to be the place where we ought to start as the floor as to how we address uh, racial injustice and, and racial disparity um, issues in this country. Examples of policies that advance racial equity include recent legislation in New Mexico that allows high school graduates who have attended New Mexico high schools for at least one year to pay in-state college tuition regardless of their immigration status. Nevada legislators have broken re-entry barriers for ex-felons, restoring both voting rights and access to 26 occupations from which they were previously barred. In Illinois, consular identification legislation requires state agencies and law enforcement to accept ID cards obtained by immigrants from their home nation's consulates as a valid form of identification. Missouri's racial profiling law prohibits racial profiling, establishes a review and complaint process, and requires ongoing data collection. Something that we're working on right now in Minneapolis Public Schools is a collaboration between the American Indian Community and the Board of Education, so the district. We're coming together to create a memorandum of agreement in which we talk about policies and we talk about education and how we're going to approach it in a way that really serves our Native American children that haven't been served in the past. And it's historic, something like this has never been done before, but it really took Frankly, someone from the American Indian community, me, <laughs> getting elected um, in order for that to get on the table. There's a lot of, of important racial justice policy work in play at the moment. Struggles over decent and affordable housing, struggles over the access to jobs, the ongoing struggles over access to healthcare and education are all crucial battlegrounds where important racial justice work is being done, but still so much more needs to be done. The Developing Justice Coalition's work around uh, ex-offenders and the opportunities ex-offenders receive once they come back from prison. Uh, enabling ex-offenders to have their records sealed so that when they return to the community, they are able to uh, have a much better chance of getting jobs, getting hired, because they can truthfully say that they do not have a record. Key criteria for policies that advance racial equity. One, an explicit goal of eliminating racial disparities. Two, stakeholders from the racial groups affected by the policy are involved in its development. Three, a realistic implementation plan that includes goals, timetables, public documentation, and adequate resources. Four, 
measurable outcomes that are racially equitable. Our country is afraid of race. We have a deep-seated disease of denial. And so it's really important to be upfront and open with race and how it is the fabric of this country. Race trump anything in this country. You give me class, race gonna trump it. You give me anything and you put race on it and say as bad as your situation is, you put some color on it and see if it ain't worth it. Presently our structure really is an apartheid structure. And so if you don't have the analysis and the understanding of where racial and ethnic uh, communities fall into this system, I don't think that it's possible to create um, change in a community so that there can be equity. There is a tendency to not speak about race and the impact of race and race as a factor uh, very explicitly. So even though healthcare often talks about it's a national crisis and healthcare often gets talked about, you know, in, in a non-racial um, uh, tone, um, those of us who are concerned about social justice and racial justice um, and disparate impact on different racial groups need to look at these issues and do the analysis um, along the um, a, a racial analysis and we'll see what the disparate impact is. I think it's fundamental that we have a deep racial analysis and I think that um, that means in part that we understand how race operates, how it ra operates when we're talking about class, how it operates when we're talking about things that don't appear to be about race. We have a discourse in our society right now where the way we promote racial inequality is through race neutral language. It's through buzzwords, it's through concepts like individuals, like um, personal responsibility, like anti-welfare. None of those appear to be about race and they're all out about race. So I think to some extent it's important to expose how the sort of largely race neutral, langu neutral language is heavily racialized. Race and racial hierarchy is part of what explains why we have racial disparity. So unless we can talk about race and the cumulative hoarding of resources by some and the disinvestment and denial of resources for others, which is highly racialized, uh, we don't actually get answers to the problem. So we have to talk about race to get at the way that resources are distributed racially. Can't you see it? Can't you feel it? It's all in the air. In order to solve a problem, you have to be clear, you know, you have to be clear what the problem is in order to get to the solution. If you ignore race, you can't solve racism. We need to, to lead with race to expose the, the, the realities of racial disparities. And so when we, when we fail to call out the racial disparities, oftentimes for the general public, they don't see it. And so leading with race is an opportunity to draw attention to the pervasive racial disparities that exist in our society. In a lot of work that I've been engaged in, policy work organizing, there is a desire to win simple or single policy objectives, which you can do without talking about race. And in fact, folks tell you you're better off not talking about race. You're better off talking about, in juvenile justice reform, that they're kids and kids should be treated as kids and no child deserves to be beat and not talk about the fact that the system is a legacy of slavery. But the truth is um, you have to because in the end you lose. So you pass, you know, you pass a juvenile justice reform act and it, and it, you know, shuts down one prison and the detention centers and local places just start getting filled up and though you haven't done anything to policing. If you are able to address racism and shift climate and public debate on racism, then you begin to impact all of the various systems. And ultimately you have to ask yourself, are you getting to a place where you are going to be able to lead with race? The light color in this room